Pizza. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Cinema Lounge, where we sit back, relax, and talk about movie topics. Tonight's topic is an interesting question, actually, that I discovered. This is an interesting question for you guys. And I made you guys think about it. I hope you guys have results. Maybe not. I have not thought of anything because it's a really hard question. I just like to say my results came back negative. <laughs> oh, shoot. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I told yeah. you that hooker was worth it. <laughs> Which yeah, one? The dead one? <laughs> yeah, the only problem is I had to put her in a trunk. Mm. <sighs> Again! <laughs> God dang it. So, the, uh, the question that I've really discovered because some somebody asked it on a q a and somebody else's video is if you could take a live action movie and turn it into an animated movie forever what would it be or the alternative would be if you take an animated movie into a live action movie forever what would it be well the latter is none thank you very much good night <laughs> yeah da, 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 da. <laughs> so it's... and now i have just re i've just started recording video so okay I was a bit late there. It's alright. It's fine. Hmm. So, so, so we're supposed to get results, but you're not? What's because it, because it's tricky, because what live-action movie would you turn into an animated movie forever? That's the thing. Well, that is a very interesting question, because those moments are actually legitimately extremely rare, almost mythological. The only one that I know of was actually of Metropolis, that in Japan they actually readapted to the uh, two thousand. Uh, I believe it was somewhere in the either in the late nineties or the early two thousands. Yeah. That they adapted, but other mm. than oh, that, and it's such a weird. It's a it's such a a weird lost in adaptation. <laughs> it's hard to know where to start, but uh, yeah. I I didn't see that one, but judging from what I'm hearing, it sounds like a Ghost in the Shell clone. Yeah, it it, it I was kind of getting that vibe. I never really. I saw it all the way through, only partially, and yeah, Ghost Ghost in the Shell has a has its, has its own live action remake coming. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's just it just makes you I think. I'm intrigued to see what they got, but chances are I know it's not going to be as good as uh, the Mamoshi Oro movie. True, true, but uh, I give it some chance. I mean, it's hard when you think about it because there are film to animated TV series, but there's very few films, there's very few live action films that have been done the other way around. Mm -hmm. And even then, both mediums have their strengths and their weaknesses. You can do things in animation, but there's also limitations. You can also do things in live action, but there's also limitations. Um, there's aesthetic differences as well to yeah. take into account. People, yeah. some people prefer uh, the look of something real. Some th some folks who prefer something uh, a little bit more flat. Because mm -hmm. I mean, technically, like actually, like one interesting one that could be like a stretch of an example, the, something that is actually vastly different that I just thought of is. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I mean, technically, it's not an animated <sighs> movie, but like, take an animated spe like, take something from animation, in which in this case is the Chuck Jones cartoon, and then you, then you got the Ron Howard movie. Mm hmm. Okay. Like that's all. Like if it weren't for the connection with the Doctor Seuss story, that's like legit apples and oranges right there. Huh. Okay. I don't think we can count King Kong because that went from stop motion to Rick Baker special effects to motion capture CGI. And even well, no, then, not really. That, that's don't just forget Dudley Moore. That's that's all visual effects. Like I yeah. understand the use yeah. of stop motion, but that's like the precursor to uh, special effects of bringing monsters to life. Dudley Moore was King Kong. You okay. never heard of the Mighty Kong? Don't remind me. Oh god, that cartoon? No. 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 Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Not in my universe. Never will. See. 
See, uh, it's, it's not the last time we would see Purple Kong, Kong either. Check Netflix. Oh, God forbid. Don't worry about that one either. <laughs> I will bring back the Stratazonas. Anyway, um... No, see, what, no, I'm trying, what I'm trying to bring to this question is that there, there's films that you could translate into different mediums. Like, there could be a way to translate a live-action movie into an animated movie. Like, <laughs> there's... Or vice versa. Well, Maybe. here's the big question, though, is that if you are going to adapt something from, uh, let's say, animation to live action, are you going to actually adapt or not? Because sometimes you can go into an entirely different direction that, like, mm -hmm. often it would not end up working. And the best example is Maleficent, which is, really? in a way, like I... a live action adaptation of uh, Disney Sleeping Beauty. But it takes so much, such a big turn. Like, okay, yeah, I understand, like, making Maleficent the star. That's fine. But, like, completely changing the story to have this overly forced feminist message and, like, trying to make her a good guy and make King Stefan an absolute freaking lunatic. Like, somehow, like, I guess, like, he still has that, like, I, I guess that guy still has that virus that he had from freaking District 9 in his head, and that's what makes him go freaking crazy. But yeah, like, sometimes, like, if you are going to adapt it, how well are you going to adapt it? I, I mean, yeah. Maleficent had the look of an overall sort of attempted feel of Sleeping what? Beauty as, what, what? as posed in live action. But it didn't. And I hate to say it, I, I, I just, I just feel like it. Maybe it didn't have the clout. I don't know. It's been a. Uh, I, I sparsely go around uh, seeing, uh, seeing Sleeping Beauty. Mm. I, I don't know. You, you enjoy Beauty, it. I mean, like, at least it, it tells a story. It's, it's just like. It has some of the right components. I don't mind the, the computer animation. Well, I, I don't mind the special effects. And I, I still think, like, having Angelina Jolie playing as Male Maleficent is a great casting choice. She could pull it off very well. It's just the writing, holy Jesus Christ, it is freaking garbage. You also forgot the Three Stooges fairies. I, I, I want to forget about the Three Stooges fairies. <laughs> nick, nick, nick. <laughs> I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna give her the chance to give the voice. Yuck, 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 yuck. I, I, I just want to say I like the fact that Maleficent is just constantly trolling them for no reason. Oh like, yeah. Making it rain indoors and everything. Oh yeah. Just, like, for no reason. It's just like petty dumb things. And in a way, like during the middle of it, when you see the progression that she's starting to like uh, Aurora, there's a part of me that does feel like there's a transition. That some re that for some reason Maleficent is slowly but surely turning like somewhere down the middle she's becoming Isma. Look at and the I mean, like you got the big like it's enough that she has like the big hunky henchman like the crow turned into a human like showing his bare chest and everything. Hey, like, that could already a... be Kronk right there. Hey, she's gotta bang a bird once in a while. Mm. So okay. I think that came out wrong. So okay, wait, you wait. You think? <laughs> There's there 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 is an example I have, and it doesn't count because it's television. But I would like to bring it up because mm -hmm. here's the thing: there are live action to animation translations, but at the same time, say something is missing, and you only have the audio for it. Uh, case in point being missing Doctor Who episodes. Uh -huh. Very rarely, very. Very rarely, the BBC will actually go all out on their way to take the actual soundtracks, um, the photographs that they had when they're taking still pictures during the um, airing, per se, and try to do the best they can to recreate it. And this I hold in my hand is the very first full, keyword full, animated recreation of a serial. We're not talking about one or two episodes that are missing and they didn't know they could recreate. No, no. This is like a fully animated recreation and that can be a good thing and also a bad thing because you at least get to see the story in a different perspective differently animated but at the same time 
The problem is that there are certain liberties taken because they don't have the actual footage and they have to work with stills or even like little uh, film clips here that still survive. So in the same time, even though you're hearing the actual thing, you're seeing sort of like an interpretation or in this case, an adaptation of the visual material. And that really can go either way for any book. Yeah, I remember, I remember uh, watching the... Uh... Uh, the the behind the scenes on on one of those how tos on on I mean on, on one of those uh, animated renditions uh, they they had to do stuff like uh, listen to listen to the audio track and the problem is uh, when they're when you're simply uh, doing that sometimes they'll they'll hear something like uh, someone bumping against a table and they'll just have to sort of figure out. Uh, how to interpret that sound like who's walking across the room who's bumping against the table it could not even be bumping against a table they could be bumping against a, a computer and it might sound like that they had kind of the same problem here too there's a scene where the doctor is constantly annoying his companions with a flute that he has uh, i'm probably gonna get this wrong but it's some it's a piccolo or not it's, a pic, it, it's some kind of a flute and supposedly the companion takes it away from him and then in the original story somehow the doctor gets it back from him and the gag is that he looks and he goes how did he get that they don't even show the animation of the doctor they don't even show the animation of the companion taking the flute so even that line doesn't make any sense um but even then you have the bbc doing it which as we all know not the highest budget at all Mm -hmm. So technically, and I'm not kidding here, you're getting something that's the equivalency of flash animated, stylized anime, which is very South Parkian. And, and, and even then, that can look either cool or just a little off-putting, by the way, they're sort of moving and kind of jerking around and stuff, which is kind of a shame. I mean, it, it's nice to see them go all the way to do something like this. By the way, this is worth getting for all you Doctor Who classic fans out there. Um, it's a shame because they do put a lot of effort into it, but clearly there's not a whole lot going into it because there needs to be a higher budget to accommodate certain things. Mm -hmm. hmm. I am a witness. I haven't seen an entire thing, but uh, I'm sure. I believe you have a have have a, a showcasing scheduled at some point. Oh yes. As soon so as get this, as soon as I can drag this Canuck in with us, someday, someday. Yes, someday. Someday. Well, I have to ask: Am I the only one who's picked a a single example? Of uh, you probably did. Huh? You probably Maybe. are. Okay. In general, yeah, because this is a bit of a, this is a bit of a 180 example, and uh, because we've, uh, uh, because we've seen so many cases of, we've seen so many cases of uh, of films that have started out animated eventually remade in live action uh and the problem with that is uh i believe this discussion mainly says excuse me mainly says if we if we could turn it into live action permanently or vice versa how would we change it or or which which one would we do and the problem is when you had when when you make suggestions like the Jungle Book, well, that was remade at live action. Mm -hmm. uh, but would you get rid of the original movie? Isn't, that's part of the question. There would be pitch. There would be pitchforks. Yeah, that's out. that's part of the question I said. It's like which one would you replace forever? That's the thing. That's the tricky part of the question. Well, well, I found a movie that that I would replace. Uh, and I. Um, and I'm. It's. I picked something that is very, very, very obscure. Only Morgan was the was the one I believe who uh, first. Uh, uh, who first introduced me to this film? It's not really. Uh, it's not really. 
a movie per se, more shall we say a TV special. Close enough. Okay. I'm not gonna count. Part of the ABC weekend lineup back in the early eighties. Oh god no. Oh god no. 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 That's what he was suggesting. No. No. Yeah, it sounds good. What is it? <laughs> okay. A little animated movie called Scruffy. Gruffy? Or as, or as I like to call it, the dog of death. Mm-hmm. We've already seen where the dead go to die. Oh, no. No, 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 no. This is like Bambi. If everywhere he goes, the character he befriends just dies for no cause or reason except for the plot. Except for the boyfriend who is conveniently much, much older. Well, that's because... Uh well, that's because, spoiler alert, she prayed to God to say that no bad will happen to him, and God listened and said, okay, you had too much torture enough, especially happened to your mother and your other owner, who apparently died on the way to the hospital, so, okay, I'm going to let your love interest live. Diddle -loo, diddle -loo, diddle -loo, diddle -loo. And then they were put in a veterinarian, but Scruffy had to be neutered so she wouldn't have any puppies. The end. Mm-hmm. Well, so we have a perfectly good... So? So we have a perfectly good example of, uh, of a, an original product, which is not entirely perfect, as you have pointed out in so many different ways. And uh, here's the thing, though. I read the book that it was based on. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And I believe we had uh, to give you uh, to give you a bit of an idea uh, of of what the the movie itself is uh, is like. Uh, we we haven't even uh, what am I saying? We haven't even uh, uh, given the plot yet. Um, I'll, I'll let you do the honors. Okay, Scruffy. Okay, I, I, I have a, I have an image. I'm gonna do a screen share here. Matt, where are you? Right here. Oh. I'm gonna suffer here. I've been here the whole time. I just disappeared. <laughs> I can still hear you. Okay. Yep. Here, uh, here is the best uh, box foreign box cover art that I can Scruffy. Don't be fooled by the cuteness. Mm-hmm. There is a there is a solid level of uh, there there is a, a solid solid level of uh, Bambi effect that goes on here. But here's the thing. I read the book um, and as far as the the film's interp as far as the animated interpretation goes, Scruffy is a puppy who is born to a stray who's left who is left behind by her owners when they move. Um, uh, she has to uh, basically live life out on the street, uh, going from uh, going from one group to the next. At one point, she has a uh, she has a, a, an owner who's a homeless guy who gets uh, uh, who uh, gets hospitalized and dies and whatnot. The spoiler alert. And then she goes off and hangs out with this group of street dogs for a bit. Um, yeah, you get a you get an idea that this is going to be a type of movie. Uh, where it's it's just uberly 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 friendly and uh, here's the thing it's supposed to be based on a true story but when the writer wrote it 
when the writer wrote the true the true story there's uh there's only one portion of it that was actually true a scene at the end where everyone where a bunch of dogs get adopt uh a bunch of dogs get adopted and scruffy makes the newspaper as one of them so uh so the writer of the book made a, everything else up the story from beginning to end uh, based on accounts of what happens to stray animals out on the street and what people have seen and what they wrote uh, this uh, this um, uh, this this movie is uh, is a missed opportunity here because even though we've described it as being depressive and uh, uh, to an extent actually very cliched it, I think it misses the jugular. The book was the book felt a lot more real, a lot more on point, and whatever they were doing here feels watered down, and Disneyfied. No kidding. The uh, the breed of dog was not uh, a cocker spaniel. They they redesigned Scruffy for the for the special to look like Lady, I think, as a puppy. Oh, sure, you complain about that, but not the scene where the hunters shoot the mother. Oh, I was I was going to get to that if you, uh, if you perchance brought it up. Um, was it for sport, or, like, what? Just get them stray dogs out of my property. Oh, look, some wild animals. Bang! Oh, it was a dog. Uh, oh, get off my lawn. Oh, shoot, it wasn't a wild critter. It was just a stray dog. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, it might be... Yeah, it might be a depressing moment, but the thing that ruined it for me is that it's execu the whole scene's execution is, in the film version, is straight out of... is straight out of Bambi in terms of how everything plays out. In the book... It happens also, but you don't see it coming, and it's kind of a, it's kind of a jolt. So I'm wonder, so it feel it feels like what what they did with the film was, uh, let's go into familiar territory so we can be slightly safe here. Yeah. There's such there is such a thing as too safe. But I, yeah, I felt like. Whatever the book had, if they had just stuck, if they just stuck with that and done it, and done it in live action, because it's not supposed to be a talking animal feature, it, it's not supposed to be a talking animal story. Uh, that's what they did for the film, though, is they gave all the characters voices, and hey, it's a full cartoon. Um, and in a sense, that made it a lot less effective. I think I think you could get a, a team of uh, animal trainers and actors together and and pull something off like that uh, like this with a lot more heart than than what went into this animated special. I'm just thinking right now, how do you think that would be if like Andy Circus did like a motion capture version of this? Like it'd be weird, but it'd be kind of interesting at the same time. Um, just, just like all the dog CGI and the humans are just live action or something. I don't know what the point would be because it'd be weird, but at least it'd be something. Well, with the reason why that works with the the Planet of the Apes reboot is because uh, they have uh, they're they're dealing with animals that that do have very distinctive facial expressions and human-like movement. Not human movement, human-like movement that can be easily translated. Um, with with the case of the case of dogs, they're not always that expressive. We love them, but they you see their expressions come through their tails more than their more than their faces. I I beg to differ. I mm -hmm. have had I've had <sighs> I've had a couple of pet dogs before, mm -hmm. and every time I look at them, I always look at the eyes. 
they can be widened, they can be like uh, narrowed, the way they sort of whine or try to communicate and say something. If you observe them on sort of like a repeated pattern, in a sense, you kind of sort of in a way just sort of get an idea of how they react, how they move, how they are uh, perceiving to the environment. You, you give them a biscuit, you know, they're going to be happy, not just by the tail wagon, just how the, the eyes move and everything. I just, you know, light like a Christmas tree and just sort of like get excited and such. Um, and they look at your face and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, hell, the, the dog I'm going through right now, if she bites you and you say, no, no, she'll just immediately, like, lick your face just for an apology. It's really the actions, their expression, it's really how they move and how much time you spend with them to know exactly how they interact. If you go into a cage with a wild animal, you're going to know, you're gonna have no conceptions of how that wild animal is going to act. If you are constantly with something or something you're going to pick on you're going to pick up on their uh, key ter- you're going to pick up on their repeated actions their repeated gestures you at least have an understanding of how they move how they act what they're saying what they're communicating so when they come to you and whine you at least get an idea that okay they want to go outside because their legs are crossing okay but ex- but the other side of that is how uh, how likely are you to find act, uh, fully grown actors that are comfortable going on all fours pretty much all day at the speed of a dog? Considering you put it that way, I don't think I can answer that one. <laughs> well, I don't think that's the job of the actors doing that. It's more the job of the animators trying to like convincingly animate a dog that you can see the emotions onto it. I mean, sure, like they're not gonna, they're not going to go like with the expressions of an actual dog, but like it's more their jo- job to really make a conv- you know, to animate a dog that's convincingly a dog, and not just like some kind of cartoon character like Droopy. Still, with the uh... With the action around around the story that involves the human characters, who are the only ones in the, in the story that actually speak, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of human and pet interaction uh, in this story. So uh, that's that's unless you have an actual animal uh, on uh, on set, the uh, the the chemistry is not going to be the same. True. Well, that's more for. Wouldn't that be more for live action? Exactly. Which is why I think this story is would work better than in live action. So, ah, yeah. so you want it to be a keen like Marley and me in a way. Mm-hmm. Kind of like that, where they have a dog, like like an actual dog, and I wouldn't say Marbidou because they use CGI in the dogs so once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> or like Scooby Doo. <laughs> God, oh, there's, there's a reason I forgot about that one. You guys are basically think about this. You guys are essentially uh, arguing that this 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 film here be turned into Scooby Doo. Well, no, I didn't say. I was just trying to find. Sweet scoop! That shot your mother. I wasn't. I was trying to like think of it how you would turn this into live action. So it'd be like a live action movie, like, you know, your typical family dog picture, like Marley and Me, which is a great example of that, cause, which is also based on a book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you wouldn't want to use, like, CGI. That's the thing, though. If you turn into an animated feature into a live action, one, you got to go with liberties. You know, you can't just go, like, CGI with the animals. If you're going to do Scruffy, for example, as a live-action movie, you got to go with live-action dogs, get the dog actors in there with the trainers and all that kind of work, which I can understand. That's a good choice. I mean, it's something different. Nobody knows a lot about it. It's underrated. And that's a good example of that. And it's... The, the book, I... The way that it's told and everything... I honestly get to, uh, I honestly, for, for so many reasons, uh, I, 
there was that one time where I was I was considering doing a from pages to pictures on 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 this, even though no one nobody knows about it, or at least something similar. Um, yeah, the book for so many reasons is just uh, it it was so much more emotionally compelling on uh, on on so many levels because of how they treated the story. Okay, and part part of that. Part of that comes from. Part of that comes from um, how 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 you give this this story a realistic treatment. Okay. Everything's everything's played out to perfection, shall we say? See, that's why I wanted to bring that question up to you guys because it's just an interesting thought to have, like. What animated feature would you turn into live action? I mean, of course, we have The Lion King coming up here, especially with the casting news uh, of James Earl Jones coming back as Mufasa and then Donald Glover being the new Simba. Mm -hmm. You know what would be actually, like, you know what would be an interesting idea to actually, if you really want to turn an animated project into live action or a live action project into animated, you know, it might sound crazy. Like, why not just do... A bad animated feature mm -hmm. I know it sounds weird but like mm -hmm. it's mostly to give a chance to the story to actually make something good to make something that's uh, superior mean, that's kind mean, of what I'm suggesting yeah you mean like some, you mean you mean like something like the wildlife or a normal the north yeah, um well th those projects are like kind of hopeless but I mean like something that you would be capable of of taking the source material and actually make it good like a great example would be like many like a lot of animated films try to adapt uh, a lot of kids books and they would fail you know a lot of like uh or, or rather it be stuff uh, i'm trying to think of a few examples like either um home cloudy with a chance of meatballs uh, what else is there? Uh, the Lorax is another example, or something like, or, you know, like stuff like that, and like just readapt it, and stick it more closer to the book or something like that. I'm not saying like adapt the to like not bring the 2012 Lorax into a live action movie. No, 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 no. That's the thing. You got to be creative with the animated movie. Like, which anime movie would translate better into live action? You, you know what I would love to see, which I haven't seen done? An animated version of the Addams Family. Like, like if you look at Charles Adams' drawings, uh -huh. there is, like, potential for something like this. And they've been in and out saying, oh, there's going to be, like, a stop motion anime thing. Now it's not going to be a stop motion anime thing. Oh, there's going to be CGI. Now it's not going to be not CGI. Do it. Please. There's, like, so much potential for this... Uh, bunch of characters i would love to see it more in stop motion than cgi because there's so much potential to have those gothic imageries in a three-dimensional aspect well, at one point i believe the there was they, a they were and then they just they just pulled the plug it was crazy uh supposed to be tim burton directing hmm. sort of at in the in in wake of the corpse bride and whatnot Never came to fruition, but it would have been that would have been a, a good movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's so. Yeah, it's thought. all because yeah, it's all because Wallace and Gromit got the best animated feature award and Corpse Bride didn't. Mm -hmm. That's my theory.